Hi guys, Steve and Sunday Homes by Sun with Remax coming to you uh, for our Monday market watch. Uh, every Monday, I try to go over the numbers uh, for the previous week and uh, to give you a snapshot of what happened the week before. And hopefully we can predict um, the uh, upcoming trend or what's, what's going to happen in the market in a better uh, scale, like a smaller scale, so that, you know, uh, rather than looking at numbers after a month, we're going to look at them after every week. And uh, this week is also happened to be Chinese New Year. So um, I'm going to take this opportunity for all my uh, Asian clients or anybody that's watching that's uh, Chinese, Gong Hei Fa Choi, San Ni Fa Lao. Meaning that, uh, you know, Happy New Year and a lot of wealth and uh, health in the upcoming year of the tiger so without further ado let me just share my screen and we're going to take a look at a few things so before we get into looking at the numbers i wanted to show you um, some listings that had happened in the last week and just to give you a perspective where things are. So what we're looking at here are some uh, freehold townhomes and they're various sizes, but anything around 2000 square foot, um, right now they are selling for about million seven. And we're talking about York region. So this is this one we're looking at is 120 Crimson Forest Drive, Dufferin and Rutherford area. Uh, up in Vaughan, and um, it was listed for 1.5 and uh, sold for 1.7. Okay, uh, we'll look at another one. This one is 16 in Macau, and so in Markham area, uh, also around 2,000 square foot. Uh, let me just see, also around two. Uh, this one, I think it's around 20, so this one's 2,400, so a little bit larger. Oops, sorry. Uh, around 2430 square feet and it went for 1.7 okay and we'll look at a couple more uh, this one Bathurst and Rutherford um, also in Vaughan area uh, this one doesn't have the size specified 10 foot ceiling and it went for about 1.6 as well and one last one 21 Ariana Crescent um, this one also, I believe, is about 1,900 square feet and 1.5. So you can see the trend. Uh, townhouses are becoming very, very popular because of the pandemic. Uh, a lot of condo owners want to move to a townhouse. So up in York region, uh, townhouses have gone up quite a bit since December. So let's look at some numbers and then we'll come back and look at uh, some recent condo sales. So let's take a look at our numbers for the week of January 22nd to January 28th. Now keep in mind a lot of, uh, since I'm doing this from a Saturday to a Friday, a lot of listings that happen, let's say on the 28th, don't get reported until maybe today, later on today or tomorrow. So every time I do um, the stats for the week, I also go back and try to update the numbers for the previous weeks. So if you look at the older videos, these numbers might be a little bit different because uh, I have updated them. I'm talking about the new listing, these numbers, these numbers, and like any of these numbers, I try to update them so that uh, you know they're a little bit more uh, in line with the actual number. So interesting thing, um, we'll look at the graph here. Uh, let me just close this. So in this graph down here, we are looking at the number of new listings. The orange line is the number of new listings, which is very good. We're looking at uh, you know almost double the number of new listings that came out since uh, 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 versus week one, uh, last week versus week one. So there are a lot more listings on the market. And the number of transaction is following, but the gap is widening. So let's look at here, this gap. 
it, it appears to be widening. See how uh, it is narrower here? And this one the, the, right here, um, the number of transactions actually exceeded the number of new listings on the market. But the trend here is this gap, this gap right here, it is widening. So what is that telling us? That's telling us that uh, there are more and more listings that are coming onto the market, maybe because you know it takes people time to get their house ready. They saw that the December is over, Christmas is over. Um, they want to they put their house up for sale. Now they're ready for showings, but it still took you know, a couple of weeks to get maybe contractors in, maybe get their uh, house ready in showing condition. So we're seeing 300, almost like 300 more listings on coming onto the market and just a little bit over 200 more transactions. So um, if you're a buyer, this is a good sign, meaning that there will be more and more listings onto the market and where you may uh, be able to find a deal. But if you're a seller, uh, I implore you, encourage you to try to get your house ready ASAP. You want to capitalize on this spring market uh, and uh, put your house up for sale as soon as possible because this, this gap is getting wider. Now, if we look at the number of um, percentage of listings sold over asking, it's still hovering around 85%. So the market for uh, being able to sell over asking is still quite good. Uh, it was at, at the end of the last year, it was at uh, 60%. Uh, now it's at 84%, still hovering around 80, 85%, which is historically a lot higher um, than before. Before, I think last year around this time, it was hovering around 70, 71%. So if you put your house up for sale, there is absolutely a great chance that you will get multiple offers and you'll get pretty good price. Now, in terms of price, uh, let's take a look at this down here. It's something that uh, sellers should know. The, even though we have more transaction, the average sale price has pretty much leveled off. Um, I don't know if it's just, and normally for this week, uh, there were some uh, record-breaking sales. But if you look, if we look at the grand scheme of things, uh, all that uh, 900 some odd uh, deals that, that happened in this week, uh, the average price seems to have leveled up. Meaning we could be we could be hitting a plateau, or this could be the peak. We don't know yet. Uh, what it was, uh, but uh, this this graph does give you a little bit. Uh, indication of where things are going uh, compared to a few weeks ago. So we're, we're back to sort of the first week of uh, January, some, some uh, you know, in terms of the average price. So that's what's happening in the freehold market. So keep this in mind. We'll take a look at the uh, condo market. Uh, which is right here. Now, before I jump into the numbers, we'll go back to take a look at some listings in the condo side. So in the condo side, this one caught my eye. Uh, this one happened in January, on, on January 23rd, 2022. 15 Greenview is a condo at um, Young and Finch West Side. And the reason this one caught my eye is if you look at what it's sold for, 900k. This is a one plus one unit uh, with uh, with a parking. I believe it's around 640 square feet. It is a rare to have a nine foot ceiling, but for one plus one unit at this price at 900k, it is putting the gap between uh, a townhouse and a condo even much, much closer. I don't know if it's sustainable. Uh, I think this one was an anomaly. I don't know what the story behind it is, but it, I, I, don't, I don't want any sellers to think that, you know, my one plus one condo is going to get 900K. 
that is by all means not the norm. Uh, right now, uh, one plus one condo, I'll go back to this list here. Um, you can see it's around 800, maybe like high 700. So to get 900, there could, could have been some story behind it. Not quite sure. So just keep that in mind, but I wanted to share with you that uh, interesting uh, listing with so far. So for the condo market, we'll look at the uh, Toronto 416 area. 416, uh, again, I have uh, updated some of the numbers here. Uh, some of these numbers for previous weeks have been updated to show you a uh, better, give you a better idea. So if we look at the graph here, the green, uh, the, the sorry, the orange line is number of new listing. So new listing is also increasing, which is a good sign. The number of transaction, 440, is also increasing. So meaning that the there's still demand in the market for condo. Uh, has this has changed uh, quite completely since last year. So the demand is good. The number of uh, transactions that sold for over asking is also increasing right here, this number. So if we look at this gap here, it's narrowing, which meaning that um, there are more and more transactions done over asking. And actually it reflects here, 71%. 71% of the condo listing are selling for above asking. now. This could be a reason, uh, the reason could be that a lot of them are underpriced to begin with, but still you need to have enough showing to uh, make the multiple offer work. So the condo market is very strong still um, and uh, has been going up and up and 102 is the number of new condo listing that sold that week. So this number indicates that how many condos are sold within the first week, healthy number, 17% are sold right away. So if you price it right, there's a good chance that not only we get multiple offers, you will also uh, sell it fairly quickly. Very good sign for condo owners. Um, let's take a, take a look at the average price. Now, very interesting. If we look at the condo market and also the freehold market, same leveling off, same leveling off. It's telling me, I, this could be, we are doing more low end sales. So that's why the average price is coming down or the ones in the middle, the, the data in the middle are coming down as well in the price. We don't know precisely, but in the big picture, condo prices, even though, Condos are selling for record numbers, not all of them, not all of them, some of them. So in the grand scheme of things, the average price is still quite stable and hovering around 770,000. So that's the market for last week. And let's take a look at the number uh, in the rental market, how we are doing. So, because I also track rental market. Now, rental market, slightly different story now. We actually have been getting less and less number of uh, listings putting onto the market. Now, don't forget for tenant, it, you know, uh, in order for them to move, um, they will need a pretty big capital if they were going to buy. But a lot of them sign on to their leases uh, during COVID uh, in the last couple of years. So they're really enjoying a low rental rate compared to the rental market now. A lot of them are paying 1,600, 1,700 for one bedroom downtown. So the incentive for them to move is not that great unless they have to. So that's why I think why we're seeing a bump uh, because don't forget like this bump uh, right here is because end of lease, end of the year, uh, you know, leases end and a lot of tenants don't want to renew. Maybe they go back uh, to where 
or they move. So that's why we had a we had a big jump in the number of new rental listings. But since then, it's been a decline. Uh, every week, we're getting less and less additional unit that are available for rent. And the number of transactions is also slightly uh, going down as well. Uh, one interesting thing, the, the lease, 101% uh, uh, plus. So the multiple offers is slowly increasing. We're at the uh, 63 listings that were leased uh, out of seven, uh, sorry, out of 547. So a little bit over 11%, 12% are leasing above asking. So keep that in mind. If you're in the market for leasing, you may be going up against, uh, you know, other tenant fighting for new unit that come on because a uh, number of uh, units available uh, has been declining. And so let's take a look at the prices. On this side, we have the average price for different uh, price point, uh, sorry, different layout. So we have the one bedroom unit. Uh, we have the one plus one, two bedroom, two plus one. And just uh, interesting to note here that the two plus one unit prices seem to be going back up. Not much change in terms of one bedroom and one plus one. They are staying around, let me just close this. They are staying around $2,000 to 2,200. So that's the average price for one bedroom, one plus one. Okay, so having looked at that, I am going to spend a little bit of time to answer uh, a question that I received. I had a client that was looking at a property up north. Um, actually, they already owned it. Uh, they were looking to sell it and they're looking uh, to buy another property. Um, but they asked me, hey, is there any restriction or any, um, uh, um, you know, what's the definition in terms of CRA for a principal resident? Because their, their lot is pretty big. It's about a five acre lot that they wanted to sell. So I, I told them, look, listen, you can uh, declare it as a principal resident, but there are some guidelines and I wanted to go over that with you, all of you today, so that you understand if you are in the market for something up north in the rural area, a uh, little bit larger lot, something to keep in mind. Um, in Canada, what we, ha what we have is something called the principal resident exemption. So typically, if you buy a property and it increases in value, uh, you're supposed to pay capital gain tax. However, if it's a, your principal residence, um, you, it, it is exempt. So in order for the exemption to apply, there are some criteria. So not all uh, properties that you lived in can be qualified as a principal resident. So here are the guidelines. So number one, it, it's gotta be a house. It can be a cottage. So you can't declare a cottage as your principal residence, um, provided that the reason you have it is for your own enjoyment. Uh, not for, you know, doing Airbnb and renting out, all that kind of stuff. It can be a condominium. So condominium meaning it can be a townhouse, uh, uh, it could be a condo unit sky, uh, up in the sky, anything that's uh, in the com condominium structure. It can be an apartment, an apartment building, um, and a, an apartment in the duplex, or trailer, mobile home, and houseboat, and so on and so forth. So not, that would also... Uh, apply. And it must meet all of the following four conditions in order for, for, for it to apply. Um, it is a housing unit. It has to be a housing unit. Sorry, let me just get rid of uh, all that stuff. Uh, sorry. Okay. So it must be a housing unit, a leasehold interest in a housing unit, or a share in the co-op building acquired for the right to inhabit. What does that mean? So in order for it to be, to be a principal residence, 
um, it either individual house itself, uh, or it could be a leasehold, meaning a, a, it could be a land lease, or a share in a co-op building. Now, some buildings are not set up as a condominium. They're set up as co-op housing. There is a, a, a governing body uh, dictates who can move in, who cannot, and you acquire a share of the building. You don't actually own the unit, but you acquire the share so that you have exclusive use for that unit. So these are called co-op buildings. Not a, no, pretty much no new condos are set up like this, but a lot of the older 60, 70 condos, they are set up as co-op buildings. So those ones will qualify. You own the property alone or with another person. So uh, it's something that's under your name or you together with somebody else. You, your current former spouse, uh, spouse common law partner, or any of your children live in the same time during the year. So it could be a, a, a property that you share with, uh, with your children, with your former spouse, all that stuff. And you designate it as your principal resident. So um, on the tax form every year, you have to declare which one is your principal resident. So in order to qualify for the ACE exemption, all these must be true. Now, in my client's case, he asked me about the lot size. So there is actually a, I wouldn't say a restriction, but there is a criteria. So how big of a lot can it be to qualify as a principal resident? The CRA definition typical uh, there for them is the size limit is half hectare, which is 1.24 acres. So if you have uh, a lot that is two acres, three acres, and you sell it and you've made money, CRA will want, you know, uh, give you exemption for that 1.24 acres, but the rest you need to pay the capital gains unless you can show that you need more land to enjoy. Now, what do you enjoy? You, you may have a pool. So if you build a pool, big pool, a little bit away from the house, you can say all that land is part of the pool structure that I, I used to enjoy. If you build a tennis court, sure, you can argue. But this rule is very, very strict. So uh, you can't say, uh, I have a hobby farm in the back. That, that's, that doesn't work. Uh, you can't say, you know, I, I, have a, I have a barn out of the back. That doesn't count. It must be something that you are enjoying, not just because you have a structure there. And some rural communities actually have um, a, a minimum lot size. Uh, some minimum lot size is two acres. So if the minimum lot size in that uh, community um, is larger than 1.24 acres, then you can claim the whole minimum lot size as principal resident. Uh, but anything larger than that, you will have to explain to CRA why it uh, why it should be exempt. So before you put your house, your rural property up for sale, just know that uh, there might be capital gains that you need to pay. So I'm gonna stop. So that wraps up uh, today's uh, quick overview of uh, what's been happening uh, in the real estate market. Uh, hopefully this gives you a good idea of what's happening or what is not happening and help you predict uh, the next few weeks. Um, in my mind, I think the next few weeks, we are going to see a little bit of a slower rise in price. Uh, and by March, early March, we may see a slight drop in price. Now, don't forget, this is dropping from a really high point. Um, not to say that if you cannot afford it now that you're going to be able to afford then, um, depending on you know what the gap is. But there may be a drop uh, happening you know, throughout February, but it will be a very gradual, very slow drop. 
if it doesn't go up any higher. Overall, I think, um, you know, it will take at least two to three more months before we see any meaningful uh, stabilization in the market. Uh, again, it's Stephen Sun at Homes by Sun with Remax. I will do this again next week and give you uh, an overall view of what's been happening this current week. And uh, again, happy Chinese New Year. Take care. Um, and I will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.